Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. And the last time I had on this shirt, I said howdy, so I'll say it again today. Howdy. <laughs> In today's tutorial, I am showing you how to make a photo sublimation pillow on a sequin. I guess it's called a sequin rhinestone. I call it rhinestones. It's not even rhinestones. It's just sequins. I just like to call it that. Anyway, it's called a sequin pillow. Um, I did have to use sublimation, but if you were with me for my last video, which I just did yesterday, I showed you my process for using infusible ink to create something as beautiful as this. Same process I said in that video that's uh, using infusible ink is very, very similar to using uh, sublimation, just without the sublimation cost. So when I made this one yesterday, you know, I had to reveal it and I showed you, you know, how you show, you kind of just maneuver the pillow to get to the awesome reveal that you're going to see. Well, in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how I created this and I am, you know what I'm going to say, in love with it okay this is a photo that i took um, mother's day weekend when we flew down uh, to visit my mom and surprise her and i love this and i know that she will too so without further ado let's get started the materials that i use to complete this project this is the type of ink that's in my printer it is called i think it's pronounced hippo h-i-i-p-o-o -O. um and this is what's currently in my Epson 2760 Workforce or Workforce 2760 printer right now. This is the paper that I use. It's the A Sub um, brand, 125 grams. It's the one in the black and gold box. I am using um, the Cricut um, heat resistant tape. You don't have to use this kind. You could. There's another brand that you could use, but this is the one that I'll be using. I'm using these heat resistant gloves because when you take the anything from your heat press if you have one of the the hot ones like i do you're going to need something to protect your hands i just got tired of burning my hands i'm using a lint roller i'm using this pillow that i purchased from amazon it came in a four pack it's 16 by 16. this pillowcase is a this is the white reveal kind but you could use um, there are different colors. You can have a gold reveal. I think there's a pink reveal. It, it just depends on what you're looking for. Um, this is also, of course, 16 by 16. And this butcher paper, which I also purchased from Amazon, and I love it because the cutter is right here and it's convenient and it's, I can just move it as much as I need to. And lastly, this is the photo that I'll be putting on this pillow um, during the tutorial. I did use Microsoft Word to make my image bigger and I did remove BG to remove the background. Okay, after you've decided the, which photo you want to use, one option and the thing that I did in this case is I uploaded the photo. So I had the photo selected, I opened it um, and I knew I didn't want this background so I just did remove BG, went to removebg.com, I downloaded it and then I went to Microsoft Word. When I got to Microsoft Word, I changed the layout of my paper um, to landscape. And then I moved the margins at the top and bottom all the way over because I wanted to be able to, you know, stretch the picture out as far as I, as I wanted to. Then I went to insert picture from this device um, and it is a download. It's the one I just downloaded. It's the remove background. I right click on it and for wrap text, I made it tight. When you do that, you have the option to, you know, move the photo around on your paper freely. Um, and I just stretched it out as far as I could without making the picture warped. If you're having a hard time seeing the whole picture, you can just minimize the view on your screen a little bit and then just, you know, continue to stretch it out so that it will still, you know, fit on the paper. The paper size, my paper size was eight and a half by 11. So I knew I was limited to that. And when I felt like I had it exactly where I wanted it, I, you know, went to file, then I went to print. I'm not going to print this again, but I want to show you my process. So then I, 
have my printer selected. I went to printer properties and I have my settings already set on a sublimation preset. My sublimation preset looks just like this right here. Um, and I referenced this in the video where I did sublimation t-shirts for beginners. And I will put a link to that video down in the description. Okay, so it already mirrors it for me no matter what um, pro program I'm using. So when I just clicked okay, um, I'm going to cancel this because I'm not going to print that again. And then when it was time for me to actually print, I put my paper in um, so that the words, the words A sub was facing the wall. So that all I could see was the blank image, uh, the blank piece of paper. So when I print, when I went to print this at first, this was on the back. This was like facing the wall. And when it printed out, you know, this was the image. Okay, I have my heat press still heating up. I am going to press the pillow first um, for about five seconds just to, not the pillow, not the pillow. I'm gonna press the pillow case for about five seconds just to let it heat up. I put a piece of butcher paper on my, on the plate. And now I put the pillowcase. I am going to put a piece of butcher paper on top of that also. And slide it back in and just let it heat up for, you know, just about five seconds just to add some heat to it. Okay. okay. It's hot, but it's not too hot for me to touch it. Um, the next thing that I'll do is go over this with my lint roller. Okay, one thing that I did learn from watching a design bundles tutorial on sublimation is to always let your photo heat under your heat press. So I'm going to just put it there, not press it at all. It's just sitting on the plate. My heat press is not pressed down. So it's just making sure that the ink is completely dry before I get ready to place it on my whatever I'm gonna do my sublimation on. In this case, I'm using this pillowcase and I want to make sure that all of my sequins are, you know, flipped in the right direction. Okay, let me make sure that's take that off. I'm positive that's dry and ready. Okay, kind of just have to, you know, and if this doesn't bother you, don't worry with it, but if you are into sales and you know you are making you know a pillowcase like this to sell it, then you, you want to make sure that they are all flipped over. And even though I'm not selling this, I'm making it for myself because I'm doing a tutorial, I wanna make sure I'm giving you best practice. Okay. All right, so then I'll go over it with my lint roller and really there shouldn't be anything on it. But just in case. Not too worried about this. I know my image is not, there are a little bit of fibers. My image is not big, so it's okay. All right, so I am going to flip my image over and just kind of eyeball it to see, you know, where the center of it is. I think it's perfectly fine right there. Now I will get some of the heat resistant tape. Okay, I have my pillowcase. I have the photo face down on the top of the pillowcase and I have my heat resistant tape. I'm using two pieces of butcher paper on top. Turn it around and I have it set to 400 degrees and I'm gonna press it for 60 seconds. Okay, I have my Heat resistant gloves. <laughs> the timer went off and I am going to take this off and show you what it looks like. Okay, these heat resistant gloves do make a huge difference. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> OMG, 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 okay. <laughs>
Okay, so hopefully you were able to follow along with my process and you will be able to get something just as beautiful as this. I absolutely love the way this turned out. I love the vibrant colors. I'm sharing all of my, the materials that I use with you. All of the links are down, the, down below in the description. I do have a Facebook group. It is called Cricut Crafting with Delanda and we would love for you to join us over there. Make sure that when you are going to join that you read all of the questions and you respond to all of them because otherwise you won't be um, admitted into the group and you'll be wondering what happened. It's because our moderators are very, very serious about that and we wanted to make sure that you understand, you know, the, the rules of the group. The two main rules in that group is no SVG dumps and no sales. Other than that, it's a very safe space for beginners. You can ask questions, you can share work, you can encourage others and we love that. Okay, so thanks so much for joining me today. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. Turn on the bell for notifications. I do upload new content every single week. And my upload schedule is getting a bit more frequent and more, um, I would even say more consistent. Um, but I don't want you to miss out on anything. I enjoy you being here with me. So thanks so much for joining me today. And thanks for watching. Bye.